Hey there, guys. I'd just like to spend a little bit more time with you on Richard Strauss's opera, Salome, particularly in the way he communicates his strange collection of characters in a totally musical way. German composers of Strauss's time were very influenced by one important composer, Richard Wagner, whose life spanned almost the entire 19th century. He called his operas music dramas because he was convinced that these were works that were a natural outgrowth which began with the tradition of Greek drama that began nearly 3,000 years ago. He saw opera as being a ritualistic affair, something extremely important to be uplifting and transcendent. In other words, not just entertainment. Now, Wagner's operas were very long. He took his time working out the events that would happen on stage, and he felt that his audiences must commit to the same time. In order to give unity to these sprawling works, these epic dramas, which could last as long as five hours, he came up with something called a leitmotif. Leitmotif is a German word that literally means leading motive. Light, L-E-I-T, and motif. Light meaning to lead and motif, a short, pithy, characteristic musical idea or melody. Wagner used short musical ideas or melodies to lead the audience to recognize a character, an emotion, an important element in the plot. Strauss does exactly the same thing in his opera Salome. As you've probably guessed, there are light motifs or leading motives for every character in the opera. Salome, Herod, Yochanan, or John the Baptist as we call him, Herodias. There are a number of light motifs that are associated with the main character, Salome. One of them appears at the very beginning of the opera as the captain of the guards, Nadaboth, and the page boy talk about Salome. <laughs> You'll actually hear that motif or some version of it quite a bit in the opera. Let's listen to it from a recording uh, and hear it as played by the actual orchestra in the opera. So as I said, you'll hear various versions of that leitmotif throughout the entire piece. Here, for instance, is a version of it that we hear when Salome actually enters the stage for the first time. This is a kind of flowing musical idea, delicate and feminine, and actually kind of flighty, just like the character herself. The most important leitmotif, though, is probably the one that describes her obsession with Yochanan, John the Baptist. This is played in the orchestra after Salome hears Yochanan speak for the very first time, and it symbolizes her fascination with him. One other light motif is important to hear, and that's the one associated with her line, I want to kiss your mouth, Yokanaan. As you would imagine, it's a sensuous erotic melody that shoots out of the orchestra when she sings that line. Let's hear a recording of that particular moment in the opera as well, so you get an idea of the color that comes out of the orchestra. There are also leitmotifs for Yokanaan. 
Here's the most important one. It has a heroic, stately feel to it, matching the importance of his character. It helps us to view him as a prophet. And again, let's listen to it from the orchestra's point of view. There's another idea attached to Yokanaan that appears a little while later, just before he opens his mouth to sing, in fact. The horns in the orchestra play this light motif, and again, it perfectly characterizes him. So that you can hear the special color of the horns playing that light motif, let's listen to the recording once more. Now there's one more idea that I want you to get familiar with before you come to see this fantastic opera, and it's the light motif that Salome sings and is played in the orchestra when she asks Herod for the head of Yokanaan. Every time that Salome sings that she wants the head of John the Baptist or Yokanaan, that light motif gets crazier and crazier, developing into a kind of musical madness that will carry the weight of the drama. Of course, there are many other light motifs in this work, and I'll leave them to your imagination to try and follow them, because besides the beautiful music and the rather decadent story, especially the tension that is set up almost like a Hitchcock movie, discovering the light motifs is half the fun. So, have fun. Get a good DVD of the opera, turn on the subtitles, and use your imagination. That's the wonderful thing about titles now. Especially with an opera in a foreign language, you can actually follow what the composer's trying to communicate with his music. And while you're at it, notice that Strauss is a master of picture music, drawing literal pictures in the texts of his scores, something he perfected in writing those wonderful tone poems for orchestra. This was a composer, after all, who said that he could describe a half-filled glass of water with a spoon in it through sheer musical means. Now that's either crazy, because quite frankly, why would you want to do that, uh, or the words of a composer who's at the height of his communicative powers. In terms of Salome, I'd like to think the latter. I'm Nick Ravellis. I'll see you at the opera.